Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Act of Worship. Uh, this week we're looking at Lent and the story of Lent and what Lent means. Uh, we've got Miss Freeman from Emmanuel coming to talk to us today, so I hope you guys enjoy. Hello friends! Today is the last Sunday after the Epiphany, which means Lent starts this Wednesday. But what is Lent exactly? Lent is a season of 40 days, not including Sundays, which begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Easter Sunday. Lent is a time of repentance, fasting, and preparation for the coming of Easter, similar to how Advent prepares us for Christmas. However, Lent tends to be a more reverent season of reflection. During Lent, Christians reflect and focus on their relationship with God. Many choose to give up something for the duration of Lent, like candy or TV, or choose to take something on, like additional Bible study time or a volunteer project, as a way of further connecting with God during this season. Sundays in Lent are not counted in the 40 days because each Sunday represents a mini Easter. On these mini Easters, we focus on the joy of the resurrection and eagerly anticipate the coming of Easter. So why does Lent last for 40 days? After Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and all that time Satan was trying to tempt him. Jesus resisted and told Satan that he only served God. So the 40 days of Lent are symbolic of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness. This is also why people give something up or take something on during Lent, because Jesus was fasting for 40 days. This Wednesday is the start of Lent, Ash Wednesday. The Ash Wednesday service focuses on our sinfulness before God and our human mortality, helping us to realize that both have been triumphed through the death and resurrection of Jesus. During worship on Ash Wednesday, we receive the imposition of ashes, which means that we come forward and the pastor draws a cross on your forehead with ashes, says something like, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return, or repent and believe the gospel. Ashes signify our sorrow for our mistakes and are a reminder of our mortality because the creation story describes God creating human beings from dust. This Ash Wednesday, I encourage you to think about what Lenten practice you can take on. Maybe you will spend more time praying or reading your Bible. Maybe you will do something to serve those in need. Or maybe you will fast and give something up as a way of connecting to God. Whatever you choose, use this time of Lent to help prepare your heart for the coming of Easter. Hi everyone, Miss Freeman here. We find ourselves in the season of Lent, and so I just wanna share a few thoughts about what is Lent and maybe ways in which you might want to engage during this Lent season. So Lent is a period of around 40 days that is celebrated from Shrove Tuesday up until Good Friday. And this period of time is observed by Christians as a way to prepare and reflect um, ready for Easter. And Lent is used as a time to recall all the events leading up to and including the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. Now, Lent is observed in lots of different ways, different denominations, different churches, um, do different things around this time to allow that preparation and reflection. But I think that there are three main focuses that a lot of Christians try to observe during this period of time. And they are fasting, praying, and giving. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about those three things and how we might want to do those during this season of Lent. So let's start with the first one, and that is fasting. So for Christians, one of the main reasons why we choose to fast is because Jesus fasted. As Christians, we want to be Christ-like. We want to follow Jesus' example. And so one of those things is fasting. And in Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11, we read about Jesus fasting for 40 days. It says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, was hungry. And this fasting that took place happened before Jesus then stepped into ministry, before he did any miracles, before he did any teaching. It was like a preparation season. 
to get him ready for everything God wanted him to do here on the earth. And fasting can feel like that for us. It's a time of preparing ourselves, of understanding our dependency upon God and understanding and having deep clarity about the things that we believe. Fasting can also help us to recognise habits and dependencies that maybe aren't that helpful and instead build this dependency upon God. In Matthew 6 verse 33 it says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness all these things will be given to you as well. Fasting is a great way to build that dependency upon God because the things that maybe we were dependent upon before suddenly aren't there. Now it's important that when you choose something to give up for fasting that it is a challenge, that it is a little bit of a sacrifice. I could say, oh, I'm gonna give up the gym during Lent. Now I have not been to a gym in years, and so that would be a really easy one for me to do and to complete, but I wouldn't gain anything from it because I've not had to give something up that means something to me. And it's also important to know that this giving something up, this sacrifice that we do, is not to earn God's love. That is a given already. We are all loved by God, no matter what we do. We don't get positive points for giving something up, but actually the process of giving something up, of sacrificing something, produces something in us. It provides us a ground, a preparation that helps us to understand more about ourselves and the things that we are dependent upon, and also helps us to understand more about who God is and how we can rely upon him. And it doesn't need to be for 40 days, you may just want to do it for a week or you may want to do a different one each week. The main thing is about your heart, is about your reason for doing it and what you're wanting to gain from the process of giving something up. One little tip to help with the process of giving something up is replace it with something. So if you're giving up TV, for example, replace it with reading a book. If you've got something to do instead, that will help you to maintain and to sustain the um, sacrifice and the giving up that you are going through. For Christians, one of the great things that we can replace the thing that we're giving up with is prayer. And that is the second focus that I think Christians have during Lent. So let's have a look at prayer. Prayer is something that is great to add into our lives. And yes, Lent is often about giving something up, but having something that we can add to our lives is also a really important part of Lent. And prayer is a great chance and a great tool to reflect and prepare our hearts. It brings our attention to God and it helps us to listen to what he might want to say to us. In Jeremiah 29, 12, we're encouraged that when we call upon him and come to pray to him, that he will listen. It says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And prayer is simply a communication with God. It's a chance to share our cares, our worries, our thoughts, our hopes, and speak to someone that can do something with all of those things. And maybe you're not a Christian, Maybe you're just watching this for the first time and thinking, oh, but I don't know how to pray. But maybe Lent could be a chance for you to give prayer a go. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It's not a set time, a set way. Um, it's just a way of connecting with God. And there can be useful things to help you with that. One is um, having a little bit of structure. So having a structure that is thanks, sorry, and please. Saying thank you for the things that are good in your life and what God has done. Saying sorry for where you've maybe made mistakes or need to forgive someone. And please, what are the things you're asking for? And creating a bit of a routine, whether that's having a set chair you sit in or a set walk that you always go on. Creating a routine with prayer can help it to be a real priority in your life and help you to um, develop that discipline and, and see the effects and benefits that prayer can bring to your life. So we've looked at fasting, we've looked at praying, and thirdly, I want to chat to you about giving. 
So Lent is also associated with giving and charity and finding ways to bless others. And I think that's because Easter is the ultimate symbol of giving. God gave us his son and Jesus gave his life so that we could have freedom from all the mistakes we made and have hope for our future. And our giving to others is a way of us saying thanks to God and sharing what we've received already. And in this season of lockdown that we find ourselves in, again, um, it can feel like, oh, but there isn't opportunities to engage in that. How can I give? But actually, there are so many ways that we can give during this time. And actually, there's probably a need more than ever for our giving. And you can give through different ways. You could give through your time, just listening to people or offering to help do jobs around the house or do jobs for a neighbour. With your talents, you could use your money or your skills. You could sign up to give to a charity that is close to your heart in this time. Or you could share your skills um, with someone. You could help someone with that homework or help around the house with something you're good at. And we can also give with our thanks. Our words cost us hardly anything but actually can be a real blessing to others. Maybe you could write a card, send a text, or buy some flowers for someone. So this Lent, what are you going to do to prepare for Easter? Will you give something up? Could you give prayer a go? Or could you find ways to give to others? During this period of time, we are also going to be producing some Easter reflections um, on the story of Easter and they are going to be reflections from staff around the Trust. We would love for you to watch those, engage with those and use those to help you prepare for Easter. So if you're interested in those, make sure you head to our Archway Faith Instagram, give that a follow and then you'll be able to see them as they are put up on that site. I hope you've got something from today's message and I hope that there is something that you can say, oh, I might give that a go or I'll try that. I hope it's been inspirational and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you long to draw near to us and long to reveal yourself to us. Help us to get closer to you in this time, whether that be through uh, praying or reading your word. Would you help us uh, give uh, some of ourselves to those around us as we look to sacrifice as you sacrificed for us on the cross. In Jesus' name, Amen.